for ASEAN and I think other countries, there is no ignoring the fact that the South China Sea is an international waterway. It affects all our, our countries here and indeed globally. Our approach, both bilaterally and multilaterally, is to try to introduce practical measures that can de-escalate. So, let me give some examples. The hotline, the direct communications link, is set up among ASEAN defence ministers. Uh, at the same time, you just can't depend on a hotline. So, you have to build up confidence, you have to know one another. And that's why we've been busy pushing for joint exercises, which we recently conducted here. We had 3,500 over troops, many planes and ships from 18 countries working together. That really builds confidence and understanding. We recently met with Chinese Defence Minister Chang Wanqian and he proposed a number of initiatives that could build confidence. And he talked about how we should have enhanced counter-terrorism cooperation, more exchanges between ASEAN and the Chinese military and a maritime exercise. The more we engage with China, I think the better for all of us. Terrorism is a clear and present threat, and that's why the SAF has set up Army Deployment Force, which is a rapid response element, to respond swiftly and decisively to this terrorist threat and other such challenges. It will be sized as a battalion force, and it will comprise highly trained soldiers with niche capabilities, this is on top of the Special Ops Forces, the Island Defence Task Force, and of course the Home Team Agencies. There will be dedicated regulars that will be trained, assigned and tasked to the ADF, and we will also train selected NS units. We will set up the National Security Centre, and this will help us coordinate counter-terrorism efforts, use analytics, use C2 systems, help integrate Responses by MINDEF and MHA, Armed Forces and Home Team can work together. It allows better coordination. We can't fight terrorism alone. The problem is too big, too diverse. You need the cooperation for international community. So at the same time that we internally restructure and make our responses more decisive, more swift, more effective, we have to step up our collaborations with other agencies sharing information, combined resources for operations to deal with terrorists. Indonesia, Malaysia and Philippines are looking at setting up the Sulu patrols as we did in the Straits of Malacca when there was a piracy threat. And if Singapore is invited to join, Singapore will join. I mean, it's, it's to our interests. Uh, of course, with the agreement of uh, the littoral states. We are always prepared, ready to meet today's challenges as well as adapt to new challenges on the horizon and even unseen ones. For cybersecurity, we're rolling out Cybersecurity or Ops Center 2.0, a newer version which is upgraded. Now it will have advanced content scanning engines. The Committee to Strengthen National Service. You remember that I convened it in 2013. Its uh, main purpose was to improve NS for Singaporeans and I'm happy to report that we had 30 recommendations. We've Im implemented 24 out of the 30. The more significant ones that we'll be implementing are the NS vocation matching, where now for batches they're doing their NS from next year, whether it's an SAF, SCDF or SPF, they will be able to indicate their interest for vocations and we'll try to match them to the best of our ability. Obviously, operational requirements will come first. Uh, we'll have a new armoured fighting vehicle to replace the Ultra M113s, more souped up, enhanced firepower, protection mobility, situational awareness. We will roll it out by 2019. We will have more protected vehicles for combat support and combat service support elements. And these new vehicles will give better protection and meet our needs for firepower, logistics, casualty support. The protected vehicles will be rolled out next year. Our Super Pumas are more than 20 years old and will have to be replaced. We are finalising evaluations for the replacement. We will announce it soon. The Chinooks will also be upgraded or replaced with new variants. And 
this new fleet of helicopters with greater capabilities will meet our mission requirements for search and rescue, aeromat evacuation, HADR. We have announced the relocation of Pyalaba Air Base and we said by 2035. To replace it, we are expanding Changi Air Base as well as Tengah Air Base. But beyond expansion, it gives us a very good opportunity to build a modern air base from scratch, a smart air base. For simple aspects like launch and recovery for your planes, can we can use automated systems. You not only have to be able to launch airplanes, but you have to protect the island. So we looked at an enhanced island air defence system with extra layers. And I think that will give our people greater safety. Uh, we're launching the third LMV called Unity this year. So by 2020, we'll have the whole fleet of eight LMVs. Our LSDs are ageing, 20 years old, and need to be replaced. The replacement for the LSDs will have to be larger, more capable, more carrying capacity, including more space, more capacities for more helicopters. The idea is a joint multi-mission vessel, a larger scale than the LSDs. The CSP, the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership we have in Australia, uh, has been agreed. We are busy planning with the Australians what to build. On the cards are combined arms live firing range, which means that you have ability to fire in concert. Artillery, Air Force, Apaches, armor infantry can fire at the same time. Then, because of the threat of terrorism, they have urban live firing air, much bigger than the one we have in Murai. It will mean many more training opportunities for NS soldiers to be able to go there. To drive all this, you will need capable leaders for your defence technology, your scientists and engineers. So we are launching, on par with the SAF scholarships, the MINDEF Defence Science Scholarship. We are out to compete for top engineering and science talent to join MINDEF for our defence needs. We need it. The SAF has done very well in the last 50 years. When we started, very few believed that Singapore could defend itself. Today, very few doubt that the SAF can protect Singaporeans and defend our nation.